So the first, first standard that I think is the most important is isolation. Every single eyelash, natural lash, should always be completely isolated from another lash. No two lashes should ever, ever, ever be adhered together. And that is a basically an automatic re-audition of any two natural lashes are stuck together. Number one. The rest of these standards I feel are all equally important, but isolation is the number number one because we are looking and guarding the health of our client's natural lashes. So, um, good morning Deja, Design Meadow, Be More Radiant, India, good morning. All right, Brianna, good luck. She says, getting ready to go. Gonna go review the chart. Thanks, Danielle. You're welcome. Good luck. Wishing you luck. Can't wait to meet you. All right, second standard, I, I say, well, and like I said, these are not in any particular order, directionality. So extensions must be facing the same uniform direction upon completion of service. And what that means is that you should not be able to identify the curl of the eyelash extension from your above view. So those lashes should always be coming towards you and they should never be going outwards. Sometimes lash artists develop a habit of um, lashes maybe flipping over and, and pointing outwards, whether it's both corners. I often see um, opposite of your dominant hand. So if you're right hand, I see a lot of lash artists that, um, that have a struggle with the opposite eye, the left eye, where the lashes are not coming towards you anymore. They're kind of flipped a little bit out. Usually that's a, um, a tweak of the wrist that you need to maybe watch. But basically directionality is really important so that all lashes are uniform. And also because hair can grow out. Good morning, Cassidy, and you'll be fine. Big thanks to you. Um, Cassidy, shout out to my girl who is doing me the biggest favor in the world right now. I won't even say what she's doing. But um, make sure that your, uh, good morning, Monica. Love you, miss you. Um, Make, so basically hair can have rotational growth, which means that it won't grow straight. It might actually, um, got a celebrity in the house. Good morning, you are beautiful, miss you. Headed to Seattle today, we should chat. Um, so hair can grow in a twisted uh, manner. So which means that it's your job to make sure that the lashes are adhered uniformly when they walk out, just to accommodate any type of rotational growth. And when the client comes back for a refresh, those are the lashes that you must remove when you're proceeding and maintaining their lashes is take those lashes that are no longer straight out. Um, next standard is ad adhesion point. So the point at which the bond is placed. And the bond of your extension should be at the very bottom of the extension, the bottom 25% of the extension, adhere to the bottom third of the eyelash. So your bond shouldn't go past the halfway mark of the natural lash. You shouldn't be painting adhesive all the way up the lash. That may be sort of an opinion of mine. I think maybe there's other people who lash out there that do things a little bit differently, but I have a, the most success with concentrating the bond at the base of the eyelash, letting that top of that natural lash be free, even if it's going in another direction from that uniform eyelash. So we're correcting clients, um, I would say order or organization of their own lashes by basically um, correct if their lash is not pointing straight let's say it's kind of going off to the side you can correct that by placing your extension straight and uniform towards you disregarding that top curly part so we're basically you know making their lashes straighter than they were when when you started so adhesion point is really important um, making sure that there's no lifting from the base so what that means is if your point isn't at the base of that extension, then your base of your extension is going to be free to move. Maybe uh, if, you, if, you're, if your adhesion point is past the base, then the base of the extension might be up or down. We call that a lifted base. That's automatically, if we see two of those in, um, in the set, that's an automatic re-audition. So no lifted bases. One way that you can check that is if you are doing your water scrubs, make sure after you do a wet and a dry Pull your lashes back with the brush and see if any bases pop outwards from the base of the natural lash. Because otherwise, they should all be uniform and together. But if you pull the lashes back and things pop up, those are lifted bases. Sometimes you can just pop those off. So adhesion point is an important standard. Adhesion strength, that's a whole nother standard. So basically, I broke up adhesion into three sections, point, standard, and distance. 
I mean, point, strength, and distance. So strength, adhesion strength um, is how strong that bond is. So just because you put it in the right place and you put it in the right direction doesn't mean that bond is strong. So we test that by aggressively scrubbing and brushing before the client go leaves the appointment. Since we do the water scrub, we're curing the bond, we're making that bond strong, we come in with a dry brush. If lashes pop off, the strength is failing. If they don't pop off, then you know now that your client can go walk around for two to three weeks and their lashes won't fall off. So strength is a really, really important factor that is now added in its own standard. Distance as well. So adhesion distance, you cannot adhere that lash to that client's skin. You do not want pancakes. You do not want to create discomfort for your client and or increase the risk of developing an allergic reaction. So <clears throat> a distance should be anywhere from one to three millimeters away from the client's natural, uh, uh, from your client's skin. And if it's beyond four millimeters away, it's too far. So you need to kind of be in that safe distance. Two is like perfect. If you can get one and you think you can trust yourself getting that close, then great but do not touch the client's skin. Uh, an eyelash adhere to the client's skin is an automatic re-audition. That is a big no-no. You have to have control. And sometimes that really comes with time. That's why I say it could take a year, it could take two years to really, really, really master classic eyelash extensions depending on how many you do because you actually have to develop the control, the fine, fine control in your wrists while you're, while you're lashing. So just keep doing it. You'll get better and better. Um, I know I have some questions and comments coming in. I'm going to get to every single one of yours. I'm just going to finish um, discussing each standard first. So texture is another really, really important standard, in my opinion. Um, all bonds must be smooth without visible, visible texture. So that means that sometimes if you aren't being efficient with your isolation and you're getting lashes stuck together, oh my gosh, uh, Monica, you're still here. <laughs> I love it. Um, your wrist hurts thinking about it. Well... Well, you're not a lash artist. You just keep channeling spirits in. Um, it, it, it doesn't doesn't hurt your wrist at all. Monica, the medium, is an amazing medium. In fact, um, see, I'm totally interrupting myself. If you haven't heard of her, you should go to uh, your podcast app or Stitcher app and download her podcast. It's amazing. It's a tearjerker. Um, and she's an amazing, amazing person. So I would definitely... Um, I would definitely check that out and um, she said she was trying to uh, read the quote of the day which I'll repeat at the end but anyway it's texture okay so what you want to make sure that you, um, all bonds must be smooth and without visible texture so if you're having to pull apart lashes and break them apart then you you are probably um, leaving those remaining lashes with a rough texture also, if you're not smoothing out your bead during application, let's say you come in with an extension, you have a bead of adhesive and you're not smooth, smoothing that out, then you, um, you're, not, you're not gonna have a smooth texture. So that to me really matters. When I look at a set and I could see like little rough edges around, uh, around the sides, that there's something going on there. You're not doing something correctly, you're not getting the isolation correct and things like that. So make sure that when you see your final product that you're seeing a smooth texture. Um, along the along your bonds. Blending um, is another separate standard. The transition of sizes should be smooth and fluid without choppy looking steps. So even though hopefully you're using, you know, uh, lengths in a row, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, or you're blending, let's say, curls, you should not be able to see, to identify the difference. So it shouldn't be like, like that. So that's what blending is. Most of us don't do that. I have seen it though, a very dramatic jump in a size or something like that. Just make sure that your blending size is over, um, over, over each other. Symmetry is another very important standard. Both eyes should look symmetrical at any time during the appointment. So I know some of you lash maybe one eye at a time. I don't recommend that. I recommend lashing both eyes at at the same time, making sure that if your client has to abort mission halfway through her appointment, she's gonna look amazing. So make sure that um, all of your lashes are symmetrical. You know, you've got your styling figured out um, and basically, um, you know, every time you take a water break, sit back, check out your symmetry, make sure that you're working in the most, in the place of, I would say, I always say work in your gap. So make sure that 
not only are both eyes sym symmetrical, but each individual eye is symmetrical as well. Don't Make sure you don't have all the lashes concentrated in the middle or at the right hand side. You want that whole eye to be symmetrical. So you're building that frame and you're always kind of filling in the biggest gap. Um, Density, that is also an important industry standard. I feel especially at Garnet Lash Studios, what is full to you? That is a really important factor. I believe that there are lash artists or lash companies out there that are offering less than full sets. We do not offer a half set or, or a quarter set or a mini set. We offer only full sets because we believe that clients should walk out completely full. Therefore, they can afford to lose two, two or three lashes a day, come back for their appointment, well, two to five lashes a day, come back and still be full enough. So density is a big, big important factor. I believe clients should always be a minimum of 90% full. You're shooting for that 100%. That's always gonna be variable depending on the client's natural lashes. She has a lot of baby lashes that can't be lashed or not, and, and, and every client varies. I know that I have some clients that have very sparse natural lashes, and I feel like I can get a lash on every single one of her lashes. I can't literally 99.9%. .9%. So minimum of 90% full, and that means that there's nothing left there. So when you pull her lashes back at the end, nothing pops backwards. Full is full. And for some of you who do lash full sets in, in an hour and a half or whatever, I wanna, I wanna see how full they are and not stuck together and the smooth texture, everything. Okay, last standard. I said that the first one was the most important and the last one is the least, Not I don't wanna say the least important, it's the last important. I say this because I think you should master every single thing on that list and then timing. Timing is the standard at least to become a, a lash artist at Grant Lash Studio and obviously to offer a um, consistency of service to your clients Timing has to be a standard. However, I never believe that that should be your first standard that you're focused on, obviously. You need to master your skill and then time will come. So timing. So we have now a total of 10 standards that are defined differently um, with different expectations, way to master them, and reasons why they aren't mastered. I have this all in a nice, beautiful chart. If you wanna see it, you're, you're welcome to download this very document that we use. Um, my latest blog post at thelashexecutive.com, if you go to DR's blog, um, it's the latest one there. You could click on the link, download right from my Google Drive. Um, I'm leaving that link there because I might be changing it, I might make tweaks to it. So I will always, that, that document will always be updated based on um, how you know we've altered it to use it in our business. So I know Victoria says I thought they're 80 things. You're right because we're still not talking about wrist placement, twisting, body positioning. There's all these other things to think about while you're lashing. This is just just uh, standards of you know outcome of the set. This is like looking at your set final product. But you're right, Victoria. She, if you guys have worked with me, I'm always saying there's 80 things to think about. Bill. Yeah.